So I've been going over this all week, and I've been really wanting to get in back into the series. And I know we've got some people that said they weren't going to be here because they have to be with mom, their moms at different places of worship, and some just being at home with, with their mothers, and I honor all that. So here's what I want to do. I want to ask all the mothers to stand in your place, please. Just stand up right where you're at. Uh, mama, mama, come on. Yeah, yeah. Now, guys, I want you to look around. These women who are absolutely amazing, God gifted and anointed to become a mother. And men, you need to say, thank you, Jesus. Well, if I say this, you could have been the one that was going to carry the baby and give birth. So you need to say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I knew I was going to get it somewhere. Yep, yep. Now, before they set, I want all of you men to stand up right where you're at, and I want you to give God thanks and give these women a hand. Come on. All right, man, get and sit down. It's not always about you. Ladies, you can have a seat, too. As I was going over this, really trying to figure out which way to go, the Lord had led me to a battle of a faith of a mother. I was really dealing with faith because we're going to be talking about the shield of faith again next week. But this week, I want to kick us off into faith and how faith of a mother can absolutely do amazing things. But faith that can prophetically see through the future absolutely releases a power, a creative power to release miracles, or should I say supernatural manifestations in people's lives. And I've got a few women that we're going to touch and we're going to talk about and we're going to see how that works through and how it works in our life. But it's really cool because a mother is really where it's at. A mother is where they carry it through. And if, if it really wasn't for a mother, we wouldn't be here is what was said a little while ago, which I thank the Lord for. But it's also one to where I think we have to give honor to where honor is due. Sometimes we as people, whether we're male or female, look over our moms. We sort of take it as a, I don't want to say in gratefulness, but at the same time, we just sort of, hey, we expect her to do that. No other job duty is there more powerful or more, more just absolutely full than a mother. From what all you moms have got to put up with, and then we expect you to take care of the house, take care of the, the, the finances, take care of us, and you know, make sure you take care of the kids. We get home from work, and we're like, hey, hey you take care of it. It's your kid. But yet when the kid does something really good, especially like in sports or something of that nature, that's our kid. I know that. Yes, you know, some of you men might not think I know that, but I do because I've been there and done that. Well, back in 1914, President Woodrow Wilson decided that he was going to make this the day for Mother's Day, the second Sunday of every May. And this is something that I really, really honor. And ever since then, we've been lifting up and we've been really supporting and celebrating the spirit of motherhood, not just motherhood, it's not just mothers themselves. So out of the first child, we start to learn that the, the first word that a child would speak is what? Mama. We, in that, there comes what? When you, when you think of mama, see, up north, it's not mama, it's mom. Yeah, we get down there and say mom, they're like, what is that? It's like, like something that you eat or drink or what, you know? Yeah, it's just like your yonders and y'alls and your fixins and your cranks or crunk. Yeah, you know, it's all those things. But when you hear mama, you hear mom, you hear mother, you hear mommy. There's almost like a peace, a security that comes through you. Whether it be, whether your mom was good or not, you know a mother that was. If we have all these examples through scripture that show us how mothers were and how, how they're so powerful in our lives. And each and everybody needs one, whether they're going to be the physical, the biological, or they're going to be spiritual and emotional. We need mothers. Don't you agree with me? Do you think that, that, that we really don't give enough honor to moms? I do. I think especially throughout the year. One day, one day out of the year. That's pretty good, but man, I think we need to do this every day. Honestly, I'm blessed to be able to have my mother live with us, and I know hopefully she's watching online. Hey, Mom, how, how you doing? Yeah, oh, no, let me go to this, too. Hey, I got a couple of moms. Hey, Mom, Donna, how you doing? Just kick Bill in the head. Hey, Mom, Nancy, how you doing? Just wanted to say hello to everybody just in case they're watching. Don't want to leave them out. You know what I mean? If you leave somebody out, they sort of look like, what? They didn't talk about me. Not doing it. I love them anyway. Well, in this, 
if we start to understand how a mom operates, we understand what they do when they give birth to us, but what they teach us. And I think that there's no greater lesson on earth than to be able to see a true mother that's walking through Scripture. And you don't need anybody to do that but you yourself and the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. That's what Scripture says, right? It's naturally born. Somebody say naturally born. Inside of you when you become born again, that spirit comes over that you're going to start to want to be a man of God. You're going to start to get into Scripture. But you're going to start to want to be a woman of God. You're going to start to want to be a mother and guide and direct in that area. And we could look at the... the the whole culture of what we've got today and the generation and start to put it down and start to think, which just run amok, it's no good. Well, that's fine and good, but we are the answer to that. God said that his people, his sons and daughters, his fathers and mothers, they are the answer to the world's sickness. We got to step up and start doing things. So with this, with the faith, I want to touch a little bit of that and really go through. Let's look at this in Proverbs chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. <clears throat> He says, Hear, my sons, your father's instructions, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are a graceful wreath about your head, and they are fine ornaments about your neck. So some moms, as I was talking about earlier on my video, some moms will open up the Bible and teach us scripture. Some moms will open up math books and teach us math. And some moms will open up the, the cookbooks and teach how to cook. Some moms, or some people need to learn how to cook. Uh, some moms will wipe, almost all of them had to wipe blood. Uh, anybody remember your mom wiping your, your blood scumming off your knee or your elbow? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, of course, my mom had to do a lot of it on my head and my face, all that other stuff, too. But I remember Kim doing the same thing. But all mothers lead through one influence, and that's the influence of love. I really start to see how they come about, which is here. It gives us uh, some lessons to think. There was a story, and I put this on that video, too, but I want to go back to it. A teacher had asked a question in the middle of school, and she said, hey, she said, your mother baked a pie, and there's seven of you. There's five children and, and your parents. What portion of the pie would you get? Little Johnny raises his hand. He says, the sixth. I'm going to get the sixth. And she said, no, clearly you don't understand, understand fractions. The little boy says, clearly you don't know my mother. For my mom would have said she didn't want any so that we could get a bigger piece of pie. Huh, that's pretty good, huh? I had a mom like that. Anybody else have a mom like that? Cool. I've watched Kim do that over and over. It's just like yesterday. We spent Mother's Day together as a family and all that. We were going around looking for a house for, for my daughter, Heather, who's moving down from Knoxville. Praise the Lord. Uh-oh. Let it out of the bag, didn't I? You ain't got to worry about breaking the ice now. I just did. Boom, boom. <laughs> so anyway, we're sitting together. You know, it, it, we're eating and all this, and Kim gets up, and she's still like the last one to sit down. So we go over, and Kim made her, her homemade angel food cake so that we could have uh, strawberry shortcake. Anybody like strawberry shortcake? Yeah, yeah man, she makes an angel food cake that just makes you, oh, yeah. Anyway, so I'm sitting there, I said, come on, you get yours and come sit down. No, 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 no. I said, get yours, so you, I want to eat it with you. Because there's just something about eating with my wife. Does that make sense? Something about having her set. But she's one of those that will serve until everybody else is served and get the last if there is any left. And I honor that. That's an influence, I think, that we need to take in the body of Christ today, don't you think? Because, see, sometimes we come to this, we come to the gospel, or we come to church, and we're wanting people to give us instead of us give. We're wanting to go out to the streets for the people to give to us instead of us give. Well, the true part of this is we find that motherhood and fatherhood is all about sacrifice. It's all about giving. And this is why he said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Yeah, that's pretty good. So a praying, faith-filled mother that is blood-bought and Holy Ghost-filled is absolutely dangerous to this culture. It's absolutely dangerous to the enemy in every area. But we have got to start to see these mothers rise. So mamas, I just want you to know something. You be totally awesome. And you blood bought mothers that are Holy Ghost-filled, that are absolutely chasing things around, watching your kids, grabbing a hold of them and saying, you ain't going out there acting a fool like everybody else. You're going to be here. I want to honor you even more for what Scripture says. You're to be double honored in that. Because it's pretty cool. I think we direct those steps. We really do. Ronald Reagan said that from my mother, I've learned the value of prayer and how to dream dreams and believe that I can make them come true. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I could remember my mom teaching me to pray. She didn't even know she was teaching me. I can remember my grandmother, my mother's mother, teaching me to pray. She didn't even know. 
me and my cousin George would be sitting off to the corner, and my grandma would be pray inside the room praying with people, and whoo, man, you could hear things just a rocking and a rolling. That was deliverance before I even knew there was such a thing called deliverance. Well, go, gr 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 grandma, what was that? You don't need to know. But man, when she started praying, you could just feel the, just the ground starting to shake. When's the last time you prayed around your children that the ground started shaking? When's the last time you grabbed your child to bring them up to the bed and sit down and start praying heaven down? When's the last time you grabbed a hold of scripture? Oh, this isn't just for mamas. This is for you daddies too. And whether you are absolutely a biological parent or not, you're sitting in the body of Christ today, which means that you're a spiritual parent somewhere. So this duty relies on you as well. When's the last time you grabbed a hand and started praying until you felt the ground shake and heaven open, pouring out a blessing? When's the last time you sweat over your own sin and somebody else's sin to watch God come down and change a life? This is the influence that I'm talking about. This is part of it. God has given you everything you need. It's time that we stand and take hold of that which he's given us. You know, we hear all these great prophetic words and these great, oh, I see a generation, man, it's just not going to see death. I'm good at that because I'm that too. But how's that generation ever going to stand up if we don't help them stand up? How is it ever going to happen if we don't take our rightful place instead of blaming it on him or her or this or that? The devil only has as much power as you give him. You have this, this power that's even more powerful than any evil, than anything that can anything in the world, any curse or any blessing. You have a power with inside you, and that power is L-O-V-E. And that love, because it is God himself, will break every chain. That love opens every door. It does. It draws. It pulls people in. You don't need a prophetic word except for the word that you get from the scriptures, from the Spirit of the Lord speaking deep into you. Mamas and daddies, it's time we get into the closet. Mamas and daddies, it's time we start rising again and start praying and watching the heavens open for us, for our children to walk in a way in which they've never seen. Now, this is part of it. It's enough of us going from place to place and hand to hand and jump to jump, but now we are coming together as one. And the last time he's gathering us for a reason don't sit and tell me how bad the world is don't put all your your remarks on facebook of how this person mistreated you and all of that don't start coming against the government start praying for the difference watch something happen god's going to use you because i got news for you i'm only sitting here because of a praying mother I'm just telling you, she prayed and she prayed and she lined up with heaven, which released an anointing on my life that called me here because of the hand of God. You're sitting in here because somebody prayed for you. You are. Prayers is what's making the difference. And it's a faith-filled prayer. It's that prophetic part that we can see this. But it takes a mom. It takes somebody to grab a hold of something and say, I am not going to let this go. Well, see, we're, we're serving a a type of Christianity, and we're serving a type of place where, where people can get blasted for speaking the truth in Scripture. You could do it in love, and you're going to get hurt. God could call you out, and you take a step, and the minute that you do, you're going to get hammered. But i got news for you. It's going to be worth it at the end. It is. I'm not going to get into what all happened last week and just what goes on throughout the week, but i got news. The enemy thinks he rose his head up. The problem is he doesn't see the sniper of the Lord setting miles behind me with that crosshairs right on him, getting ready to pick him off. Boom. And all we got to do is line up with what God's Word says. It's that simple. It's that easy. But no greater place do we start to see this in the three things that can happen when a mother takes her place in faith of the promises of God. So I want to start with this one. A mother can bring heaven to earth. We find this in Luke chapter 1, verse 37 and 38. The angel starts to speak and says, For nothing will be impossible for God. And Mary said, Behold the bond serve, slave of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Mary brings heaven to earth because she submitted to what God's word said. She knew that what she heard was that prophetic part of the word, and she wasn't going to let go of it. She wasn't going to let the dictates of this world of finances go because Mary means Mara. Do you know what that means? That means bitterness. That means heaviness. That means hard stuff that she was going through. That was part of what she did. She didn't have it good as what you hear a lot of people try to say. She didn't. But yet she walked in the knowing that God is going to create all things for her. She knew that if she would trust in the Lord, that she would stand on him, that he is going to accomplish what he said. How many people understand that God's word says, my word will never pass away? 
How many of us understand that he says it'll complete what it was breathed out to do? <laughs> That's pretty powerful if we understand where he comes with it. But the mothers of your faith of your child can have the future, but can release the provisions of heaven in the earthly realm. In other words, faith releases anointing that manifests the promises of God. She said, and this is the only way that it happened, she said and said, let it be done to me as your word says. Now, she wasn't just talking to the angel, but she was talking to God. How many people have a word from God in your life? How many people? Let me see your hand. Come on, all you that don't, you need to get in Scripture because this tells me that you're not following it right. Don't let it be shaken. You stand on that word, and you start to pull it down, and you watch a change in your life. This is a part of what he's talking about. We need to grab a hold of this and let God do something. And she didn't move. She stayed there. Your faith mixed in this will take us to another place. We start to understand that in this, we go to another mother. Her name was Eunice. We find this in 2 Timothy. In 2 Timothy, he starts to talk about the faith that was inside of Timothy because of his mother, Eunice, that was releasing that in him. So mothers, you have this. You can put your children into a destiny which they never even thought of. You have the power to do that. But you have to pray that prayer through faith. Somebody say through faith. This is what's going to make the difference. It really is. When we stand and we trust in God and his promises, he'll open up the heavens and he'll send that holy seed right down into their life so that they could walk with power. The second thing we have is a mother's faith can produce a God legacy in our lives. It can produce a God legacy in our lives. Man, it's a sad thing when moms give up believing in their child. They give up believing in the word of God over their family. It's a sad day for me, though, when mothers aren't getting in Scripture to find out what those promises are. Not finding out what, the, what the, the future is for your children. It's right here. You want an owner's manual? It's right here. You want an operation procedure? It's right here. You want counseling on how to raise your children the right way? It's right here. You want an operation on how to, how to walk the things of God? It's right here. Here, you want to know how to make a good marriage, how to get yourself out of all that stuff that traps you up? It's right here. It's right here. And it tells me in John and his epistles that you don't need another teacher, but the Holy Ghost, the anointing himself, will teach you and lead you and guide you into all truth. The new covenant tells me not another time will a man have to grab another man's hand and say, come and learn of the Lord. Why? For all will know me, he says. All will know me. Which tells me you have the same anointing. You have the same power. You have the same spirit inside you that not, didn't just raise Jesus from the dead, but raised these people to be successful in God. You have that with you. You do. Every, bit of per every person that lacks wisdom or knowledge, ask for it, and it will be given to you liberally, overflowing. How many of you need some wisdom? How many of you need some knowledge? How many of you are just stuck in a situation where, man, I wish my kid would just listen to me? Anybody? Have we got unrolling kids? Please don't raise your hand because I already know they are. Anyway, so <laughs> we got these kids that need to grab, like we grabbed a hold of. Yeah, I'm talking about them. That's my grandboys. You gotta grab a hold of them. Why? Because you put them together, they're just up one column, down the other, and they're going trying to get the girls to swing in between. It's just we gotta put them in there. Get understand what scripture will do to us. Amen. But this also leads me to two aspects of faith. One, that a mother's faith believes in what God says in his word and it'll come to pass. Two, God also believes in her children. She doesn't care what anybody else says. She doesn't matter what somebody else, how many times they went through something, how many times they have fallen. She will stand on the truth, and she will stand on, on believing that her son or her daughter is going to do great things. Somebody say great things. Man, now when I see this, I see a story that really starts to, to produce something in me because this is what happened. Faith that sees the prophetic future releases the creative power for supernatural manifestations that indoors forever, stands the test of time and battles of every enemy. A faith of a mother that will stand in this, prophetically seeing the future, will stop the enemy in his tracks. It will open up doors to make sure that child's successful. It does this. Let's look at this really quick. So we find this, this other lady. Her name's Joseph Ed. Say Joseph Ed with me. I was sitting there as I was studying with another pastor friend of mine, and so I do every week and, and going through some things. He's never heard of it. And so I walked him back through. He said, Oh, okay, okay. Joseph Ed. Anybody ever heard of Joseph Ed? Let me see that. Wow, okay, okay, here we go. All right, everybody, everybody know Moses? What was his mama's name? Uh, somebody picked that one. I was like, Yeah, it's Joseph Ed. Why? Because you just said it. 
It really wasn't. It was Ruth. No, I'm joking. <laughs> we find the story of this in Exodus chapter 1 and chapter 2, but it keeps going on as well. We find her name in chapter 6. Anyhow, Joseph had, at the time, I want to give you the backstory. You're going to have to follow me. I'm going to give you the backstory on this. Here's the, the whole body of the Hebrews. They're growing. They're underneath this really bad dictatorship. By then, the king that they had or the ruler that they had that was over top of them was sort of like a king. His name was Joseph. He had died. So there was a new Pharaoh. Somebody say new leader who didn't know Joseph. How many of you have been around people that you know, or maybe it's a job situation or something where, where you know that these people just don't know who you are or know what you walk in? Okay, let's go back to this. Some of you are still sleeping. It's okay. It's all right. If you could sleep in the presence of the Lord, you'll get better rest. So, <laughs> that's okay. So anyway, so th this Pharaoh was really scared because he saw the Hebrews growing and growing and multiplying. So he says, you know what I'm going to do? He said, I'm so scared of these people, these Hebrews. They're growing so much that they're going to start to join in with my enemies when my enemy comes and they'll overtake us. And they'll leave this land. So there was two reasons why he was afraid of them. Do you know what it was? Just said it to you. One, that they were going to join the enemy and then kill the Pharaoh, kill the, all, take away all of Egypt. And two, that they would leave. And if they left, they would take all their finances with them. Hmm. Kind of something to think about there, I think, with that. Anyway, so as they're going back, he says, this is what we're going to do. We're going to hire these taskmasters, and we're going to make them be so hard on these people. We're going to work them night and day, and they're never going to stop. And then they won't be able to produce because they're going to be too tired. Well, little did they know that when you start to persecute God's true people, God's true people start to multiply. So every time that there's a, an attack of the enemy, we're going to grow. Some of you are going through an attack, and you don't think that you're going to grow. See, when this attack comes against you, the fruits are going to grow more. There's going to be more power. There's going to be a heavier anointing, and there's going to be more of a circus of, uh, of, of God's people around you that's going to be able to destroy the enemy before he gets there. That's really good. Yeah, it is. It really is. So in the midst of all that, he said, okay, we're going to work them down, work them down, and they grew, and they grew, and it wasn't working, so they were still like bunny rabbits producing little Hebrews everywhere. So then the Pharaoh said, okay, we're going to do plan two. And they said, what's that? I want to bring my midwives in. So he brought the midwives in. He said, every time that a Hebrew goes to give birth and you get ready to sit down on that birthing stool, you take that man child and you kill it. But if it's a woman, you let her live. So they went out to do that. But their hearts were not set for that. Their hearts were set for the Hebrew people. So it didn't happen. And it said, Scripture says that God found favor or gave favor to those midwives. So you got to be on God's people's side. When you're on God's side, oh, trust me, he's going to bless you. It might not look like what you want. It might be totally different. It might not be bouncy-wououncy the way that you want it. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, it might. You best be on God's side because when you're on God's side, you'll find favor in his sight, and he will bless you and your seed. So let's go back to this. So after that, he brought them in. He said, how come you didn't kill them? Because they couldn't do it. So he brought this, these midwives. These midwives are talking to him and said, you know why? Because these Hebrew women are, ain't like our women. Hebrew women are, are, are vigorous, they're powerful, they're mighty, they're energized. Them's good-looking women. Now, I just want to be honest with you. You give me a woman that's born again, blood-bought and spirit-filled, and you give me a woman that ain't, I'm going to take the blood-bought and spirit-filled woman all the time. Why? Because there's something inside that outshines the outer side beauty. It just does. There's something that you can turn around and take the most, I want to be careful how I say this. I'm going to do it this way so you don't think I'm looking at you. You could take the most ugly person in the face of the world, and you could get them in God, baptizing the Holy Ghost, full of the blood of Jesus, and I'm telling you, they're going to be more beautiful than the woman that is absolutely, or the man that is absolutely gorgeous. Why? Because they got God in them. That's true. It really is. Some of you are like, I don't know about that. It's because you ain't looking in the mirror right. Yeah, yeah. Look at me. That was not a joke. <laughs> Let's go back. So in, in the midst of all of that that was going through it, they say, he says, you know, I don't know what to do with them because I'm trying to destroy them. I just, they won't do it. So he says, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a decree that every woman in Egypt is now going to take their born son and it's a boy that's going to throw it into the Nile. Somebody say, throw it into the river. 
Say it like you mean it. You got to put a little bit of Mike in you now, Pastor Mike in you. Throw it into the river. There you go. You're getting it. All right, so here they, they said to throw them in the river, and that was happening all over. But then this woman gave birth, and she gave birth. Her name was Josebed, and her husband's name was Amron. And they gave birth to a son. They actually had two. They had one son and a daughter before him. But anyway, they gave birth to a son. They looked at this son and said, whoa, man, there's something anointed about this cat. It's about what I look like, honestly, when I see you or feel like when I see you guys. There's something anointed about each and every one of you. But you can't see it yet because you're still stuck in all this junk and you're over your eyes. You've got to see the anointing that's on your life. You're holding something that the whole body of Christ needs. You're holding something that the family needs to come together. Do you get that? I'm not talking about what's in your pockets. That has nothing to do with it. If money's what drives you, then you're missing the whole purpose of life. Can I say this? If you getting out of hell or going to heaven is what drives you, you're missing the whole purpose. God came so that you could be called family. He came so that you could live the life he's called you and destined you to live so that you can be a powerful instrument of who he is. Hell and heavens is just a byproduct of the prime product of you being a son and daughter of God. Yeah, that sort of tunes me up. I don't know about y'all sleepyheads. But it, so here it is. She gets this kid, and she says, man, it's just so beautiful. But I want to protect him. But i got to be honorable and listen to what my Pharaoh said. So for three months, she sent her daughter Miriam, and Miriam would walk up and down that Nile. She would start to look at every little curve, every little rush, and she started counting the time, watching time. Somebody say creatively. Mary had Jesus. Creatively, Josephed had Moses. Now, the reason why we we say creatively, because there was a whole lot of things that had to be done in their life to create the security of both children. So here she is. She's sending Miriam back and forth, timing it out, watching how the Nile runs, watching the tide of the Nile, when it would go up, when it would go down, watching actually when Pharaoh's sister would come out to bathe. So she said, okay, we got to make sure that this, this, this child gets where it needs to get to because there's something creative there, something powerful there. So she takes this, these reeds, these papyrus leaves, but I also believe that they were mixed with probably a little bit of palm with it too for the worship as Jesus comes in when they laid those branches down. And she weaves this basket and she takes the slime, as the King James says, but, but she takes this pitch, this tar, she makes it so it's, it's waterproof and she covers it and she knows at this time that the baby's starts crying because you know the babies get louder right and they start to cry mama right yeah some of them just don't cry mama they just cry right we, we get all so it was at the point where they couldn't do it anymore so she did exactly what she was told to do she cast her son into the nile so you missed that the devil's going to try to tell you just let your son go out there or your daughter go out there into the world and yeah you can let it but you create a basket around it you protect it from the enemy and all the elements so that it'll float when the flames and and the floods come about it's protected and this is what she did she started doing this and she did and she watched this so she creatively made a plan that when she would throw her baby into that Nile and that baby would start to swim down the river that Miriam would be there watching every step of it and it would be camouflaged because she used some of that reach, some of that, that, that those, those, those branches, those leaves, those things those, that were sticking up out of the moss, out of around that, that bank where it looked like it was part of the bank so that nothing would come out to destroy it. And then at the timing knew that when that river would start to rise at the tide, the baby would start to flow all the way down to where Pharaoh's sister would come out at that time. Oh, it's good. It's just, now this is God because it's got to happen that way. Read the story. So she does, and she's going out. Miriam's sitting there. She's watching. She's watching. And here comes a baby, and all of a sudden, the baby's crying. Here comes Pharaoh's sister walking out to bathe herself. And she says, what's that over there? I hear her crying. She sends her slave out. That slave brings that baby over, and immediately, on cue, somebody say on cue. On cue. Here comes Miriam. Yo, what a kid you got. Man, that baby's like anointed beautiful. How about I go fetch somebody to help you nurse this baby? She said, that's a great idea. So here goes Miriam. She runs over to Joseph and said, yo, yo, mama, mama, it worked. She said, I knew it would work. You got to trust in God. Some of you mamas got to do that instead of start panicking. We panic and we start running. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, I got to go reach this person. Oh, I got to go to this person. Just shut up and stand strong in what Jesus told you because he's going to complete it. 
man, what he's already covered by the blood, nothing can stop. Nothing. I don't care who you are to think that you can stop it. You, you must be bigger than God if you think you could stop God. Right. Just that simple. Anyway, so she comes running over. She says, Mama, 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 come on, it worked out that way. So here comes Joe Sabed. She's going, hoo hi-ho, hi-ho, off to get my son and I go. Do-do-do-do. She goes up there. She grabs a hold of him. She says, ooh, this is good. So the Pharaoh's sister says, how about you do me a favor? She said, what be that? You take this child and you nurse him, and I'll pay you to do it. <laughs> See, this is where we're missing it. Because God gives us a blessing. We cover it and protect it in prayer in his word. We send it out through the hold them, knowing that God's got it. And he'll turn around and pay, have the enemy pay us to take care of God's stuff. <laughs> Y'all just, some, some of you are like, I'll be that. Watch. How many times have you stepped out knowing that God's told you to step out, never thinking that you could do something, and God supernaturally opened up a door to provide for you the people that you don't even know? Hmm. Somebody say, I met my Pharaoh's sister. Yeah. So she takes that baby home, and she starts weaning this baby. She starts weaning him, weaning him for five years. Guess what happened in that time of five years? Hebrews chapter 11 tells us. Hebrews chapter 11 says that he who was raised up knew the knowledge of God, decided he wasn't going to fall to the sin of the world and follow over here to the, the riches of Hebrew or, or, or the Egyptians, but he's going to go and put himself with God's people. Why? Because he knew that God was mightier than that. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? See, see, mamas, when you put your faith in there and you stand on the word of God and you're praying, I don't care what they say this child is going through. Oh, you could have every school teacher. You could have every cop call you. You could have everybody tell you that that person's out there. They're running amok. They're no good. You need to just put them away. I'm telling you right now, you put them away in God's hands. You put them away in the blood of Jesus. You build that temple around them. You build that ark around them. You build that wicker basket around them in praise and in prayer. See, that papyrus means prayer. And that, that, that palm is praise. You put it inside, they're covered in the pitch, which is the blood of Jesus, and nothing can stop it. Nothing. Man, mamas, I've seen you do this. I've seen you change, just change everything. Why? Because of your prayer. Because you're standing on God. Because if you have in faith, oh, it might look bad. I need you to get this today. It might look bad. You might not know how you're going to pay your rent this week. You might not know if you could even get into your car or be able to go out to eat. It might look like your person, your, your son, your daughter, or your spouse is going to hell. i got news for you. You grab a hold of those things with faith, and you hold on to it prophetically looking at it in the future, and you understand that God is going to complete what he said. And what he said, he meant. He didn't say it, and it's not going to happen. He said it will be done, and it's going to be done. Preaching better than you're looking at me. That's okay. The next thing we have, I'm only on the my Ooh. Josh, don't I don't want to hear it. The next thing we have is a mother's faith can change circumstances. Man, your faith, your prayers can change a person's life, can make your kids do something they never knew why they would do it. Can make them succeed when they never thought they could succeed. You want to know how I know that? Because of my children. I know where my kids are. Man, and, and I was blessed. Me and Kim are very blessed to have the children we have. And by all rights, we thank the Lord that, you know, our, our oldest daughter's coming back home, moving back down with us. Praise God. But I'm watching my kids walk the things that God's called them to do. Even though the enemies tried to deceive them, tried to pull them away, man, I'm praying. I'm covering them. I know better. The devil has no right in my home. This is what you've got to understand. He has no right, not just in your walls of your home. He has no right in your name. What is your last name? He has no right to the seed of that last name. He can't touch that last name. That seed has been blood bought. And when you were bought, your seed was bought. And so shall your household be saved. So shall your household be delivered. So shall your household be healed. It's time we grab a hold of these promises of God and we stand strong and quit listening to every tongue talking little bitty dee 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 teacher and preacher that wants to steer you off into another direction. It's coming by the grace of God and by the beating of bloody cross. We hold on to that because He completed it. It is completely done. Done. And we stand on that and never barter, never stop, never. Just as we talked about the last two weeks, a person of purpose and a person of principle. We stand and we're not moving. 
we can't, guys. This is an age in which the world want to take away this part of us. They want to take away our faith and say that we don't have us. We, 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 it's just going to happen. We have to stand in faith. We do. Do you think that we're, we've been in here these years and it's not by faith? Do you think that every walk that we do, you think leaving, leaving our businesses up north, not knowing a single soul down in Rome, Georgia, just because God called us and told us to move down here, leaving our home, all of you think that that wasn't done because out of faith, it was all done by faith. We had no idea what was on the other side, but we knew that we knew that God was on that other side. We knew he was in between that side. So we feel sort of like Moses here where God just put us and he, he made this wicker basket and he covered us in the blood of Jesus and he put us in the river that led us to Rome, Georgia. And some of you probably don't like that, but that's okay. I love it. Yeah. Some of you just don't want to answer your phones and I'm looking at you when I do call you. Some of you don't want to answer your phones and sometimes I don't get to answer phones. I don't, like, I'm sorry to get a chance to call you guys, but things happen in our life. But I'm telling you right now, everything that you've got to get has got to be through faith. It is faith that pleases God, not keeping a bunch of laws. It's faith that keeps God, not just praying. It's these things that please him, that give to us. Faith activated in his word, in his promises. Bam! That's what gives us. That's what his word says. It is by faith that you are saved and not of your works. At least any man could do what? Boast. We stand in what the works of Jesus was that promotes us to a whole other area. And if your faith just promotes you and not the body of Christ, then it's a selfish faith. It's a perverted faith. It's not a prophetic faith. And I'll get into that some other time because all I'm hearing is all these people speaking about faith. I know people, that's all they preach is faith, 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 faith. And that's good. I absolutely love that because we need it. But what about the other parts of that? There's other things when you come to Jesus that need to be dictated, need to be taken care of. It's easy to see. See, you might be thinking that, that, that you're hiding in your sin. You're not. It's easy to be seen. But it takes faith to understand that all my circumstances that have me back, that what I just fell with isn't who defines me. Who defines me is him. What I did, that's that sin that's trying to reign in me. I might have fell, but I got news for you. I'm getting back up. And when I get back up, I ain't falling again. Does it make sense? And it's all because we get these things put into us by faith through this way. I want to go to this other story here real quick. We find this in John chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Go on over there with me. <laughs> when you're there, let me hear you say amen. We had this old guy. He's, de he's dead now. He went on to be with the Lord. I know he went to be with the Lord. I love this, I love this guy. His last name was Leach from up at the old church from up in Pennsylvania, the uh, Mount Moriah Baptist Church. Yes, I was a Baptist. I said was, didn't I? I love him. I do. He said up here, every, every Mother's Day, big crowd, he'd get up there and he would say, I love my mother. She's going to be with Jesus. So I sing this song for my mother. M is for the. <laughs> Have you ever heard that song? Some of you, man, you guys are like that young, aren't you? Whoa. There's a song. It's called Mothers. I don't know it, but he starts, he reads it, right? M O T H E R. And he goes through each one of those letters. Look it up, YouTube it. Some of you, or whatever you do to, to get your stuff today, you'll see it. But this old guy would do this every year. And you know what? The first couple times I heard it, I'm like, I am sick and tired of this. I really am. And then one time I walked back in and he did it again and it was so awesome. And now he's dead. And I longed to hear that voice of his because I could still hear it in my spirit. How he, was, he was doing it with such love to honor his mom who was gone. What do we do to honor our moms? Now he, he couldn't sing for much even though he thought he could. But he couldn't sing for much. But he did it because he loved his mother. That's really awesome. Yeah. So here we go. On the third day, there was a wedding in Canaan, Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus and his disciples were invented, invited, invented, invited to the wedding. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does that have to do with us? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. 
Now there were six stone water pots set there in the Jewish custom of purification containing 20 or 30 gallons each. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. Somebody take note right there that those water pots were empty. Fill the water pot with water. So they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out and take it to the head waiter. So they took it to him. And the head, when the head waiter tasted the, the water, which had become wine, and did not know where it came from, but his servants had drawn the water, they knew. The head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, every man serves the good wine first. And when the people have drunk freely, then he serves the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of his signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. A mother's faith in her child can cause them to succeed where they would otherwise fail. So here you have Jesus, who, who's all God, but he's all man. He's sitting there, and his mother says, listen, this is what needs to be done. These people are out of wine, knowing that he could do all things. Could he not do all things? Anybody believe he, there's something he can't do? He could do all things, right? Doesn't Scripture say that we can do all things through? So who else can do all things? Some of you say it like you really believe it. We can't. Do you think it would be in there if it wasn't meant for that? No. All things means all things. Nothing left out. So here she goes over to She says, yo, Jesus, man, they out of some wine. And Jesus said, woman, what you want me to do? I can't get up there and do this yet. And she was like, okay. She didn't say no more to him, did she? How many of us, when our kids tell us no or tell us it's not time, do we still say, you're going to do it right now? Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I see Kinder doing it all the time, chasing Noah. No, I said, get right now. And he's like, hee, hee, hee. <laughs> Don't think Zachary's away from it. And I know some of your little hoot, I mean, children. Mm. <laughs> I know they do the same thing. They do. We, kids are like that. We get that. So here he stands up, and when he stands up, he walks over, and he starts to do exactly what she told the servant to take note of. So these stone water pots, to me, represent us as we're trying to raise our children, trying to raise up, or even walk in God. We expend, and we use all of our own cleansing, our own ways. We think that water, we think that the work is the way to do it. And Jesus said, even all your thoughts, all your works were empty, didn't profit you nothing. Servants, fill these water, fill these jugs back up again. This time, fill it with the Spirit. So they started to fill it up with the wine. It's really because it's what it was. It just didn't look like it. It was just like Moses. When Moses stood on that sand up there in front of the burning bush, when did that ground come holy? Was it always holy, or did it just suddenly become holy? It was always holy. He just had to be revealed to him to see it. It's the same way some of that is really the spirit, and we don't even see it. So it looks like it's, a, it's really a lot of effort. It's nothing but the spirit of the Lord, and we have to take a hold of it. So they fill these water jugs. They take them over to him and turns around, and they say, man, this is the greatest wine ever. Why? Because it was revealed to them that Jesus is the only way. So guys... When we're sitting there, we're praying, we're taking control of our children, we're trying to really help them. This is another way when you know you're wa really walking in the Spirit, is what's the fruits behind you look like? What does that look like? Because the people who don't know the Lord really will taste of your fruits, and they're going to know that it was Jesus. They're going to know it. That's pretty good, right? That's the whole part. And mothers, this is what you do for us. Takes me to another story, which I want to end with this. Takes us to another story. And you guys can come on up and play. Reminds me of a, a little boy that came home from school one day, and he had this letter. And as he brought this letter over to his mom, he said, Mom, the school teacher told me to give this to you, and you were the only one that could read it. So she starts reading it, and she starts weeping. He says, so what's it say? It says that you are so smart, such a genius, that the school can't teach you anymore. So you're to stay home with me. And he said, okay, it was, felt really good. So his mom taught him for years and years. And then later this man's mother died, many years later. Going through all this, he starts to, to go through the closet and all the things that the person has, and he finds this folded letter. And he opens up this folded letter, and it says, Dear Miss Edison, I hate to tell you, but your son is stupid. We can't, you're deficient. We can't teach him, so he's suspended. Do you, think, do you hear that? So you know what he wrote in his journal? Thomas Edison. Anybody remember what he did? Somebody say, a whole lot. 
you're seeing me right now because of what Thomas Edison did. It's called them lights. Yeah, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Here he is. He says, Thomas Edison, a man who is mentally deficient, whose mom turned him into a genius. Pretty good, huh? So here's what I'm trying to say to you today. Whether you're a, a biological parent or a spiritual parent, today you need to be covering your children. You need to be lifting them up. You need to be pouring into them because, hey, what the world's going to call stupid is going to absolutely be a genius to the Lord. And we need that. I am stupid too. And look at what God's done with me. Yeah. The least likely to succeed, the most likely to die before 18. Look at me today. You're never going to make it. Even when we came here, still to this day, I hear from other people, your church is never going to grow. You can't go there. You're never going to make it. Well, I got news for you. I have faith in what he said is going to happen. And I don't need a man's way of how to plant a church. I don't need that. I don't need a man's way of how to launch a church. I got one person. You know who he is? Jesus. You know what he said? I put it in you. I'm the one that's doing it through you. And this is how it happens. I hear this all the time. How are you building family? I'm not. Jesus is. I can't. It's unnatural. I just got to watch how I say this. It's unnatural for a son to produce a son or a daughter to produce a son or a daughter. But it's natural for a parent to produce their sons or daughters. So all we do is love people where they're at. And the God in us will produce the sons and daughters. That's where it's at. So today... As, we, as we're playing, I want to challenge you. So I'm going to ask Miss Heather to come up too. But I want to challenge you mothers. And then open up for the dads too, but really for the mothers. Maybe you've been going through some things you just don't quite know. That you're ready to, to really submit and have this faith that we just talked about. Maybe that you're, you're done having children. Or maybe you know that there's, there's kids around that need to be put into a basket. I know there's plenty of kids that need that. So today... Maybe you need to come up and put that child in that whisk, wicker basket so that God can do something with them. What do you think? So as they're playing, I'm going to open up these altars just for you. Now, I'll be sitting over here with my wife. If you want us to pray, we'll pray with you. But the altars are open for you to come up and to submit that child to. It's all on you. Don't leave here today without watching that spirit of the Lord take over in that situation.